Hello, this is uh, Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist. I've been in practice over 35 years doing mainly psychopharmacology and I also do TMS now. I trained at uh, Georgetown Medical School and Columbia Presbyterian for psychiatry. Now the question now is how to talk to a psychiatrist and what to expect for your first visit with your psychiatrist. I had a patient once who uh, was a semi-celebrity. I saw him on TV a couple of times afterwards. And he came up to see me in my Westchester office in a limousine. And so I spent a long time getting this history and, and deciding that he had chronic depression and he was uh, bipolar too. A lot of successful people are a little bit bipolar that they're capable of mild, elevated, energetic, goal-directed periods. But sometimes, uh, most of the rest of the time, they're a little depressed. So we finished this long interview and then he said, you know, I've been afraid of this interview for two weeks. I've been thinking about it all the time, thinking about what I was going to say about my mother, and I just thought about it and thought about it, and you didn't ask my, me about my mother one time. And I said, well, you know, I had enough trouble with my own mother. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed. And, uh, and sometimes, but not always, uh, the... Uh, the problems we had with our parents in childhood are not relevant to, to the current problems. Sometimes the problems we had with them caused our depressions or, or our bipolar disorder, but uh, we can't change that. Anyway, so I would just talk to a psychiatrist like you talk to anybody else, but you want to give them your symptoms, and I would think about the things that are bothering you that are interfering with your life. And these usually have to do with depressed mood, uh, anxiety symptoms, excessive worrying. Uh, sometimes it has to do with attention symptoms, atten that uh, it's harder for you to uh, study when you're in high school and college than your friends. It's a bigger burden for you to sit down. You're just as smart as them but it's just a much bigger burden to sit down and force yourself to read this boring textbook and study it and learn it. Um, and, and what you should expect is to cover a lot of different possibilities of uh, anxiety and depression and, uh, and some of the, the diagnoses that I've used to miss a lot was panic attacks if I didn't ask about them. I sometimes didn't find out about them for weeks. Or social phobia. I've had people with severe social anxiety that I didn't know about for a long time because I didn't directly ask them about how comfortable are you meeting new people or having to get up and give a presentation before 12 other people. Uh, or attention deficit disorder. I've had people who functioned really well at work and sometimes they were stuck where they were. I remember one woman who would uh, do the setup for a magazine so where everything was going to be placed on each page. And she'd be standing up with these stands and then people were coming in and out and, and uh, discussing this with her and there was a lot of excitement going on. And, and uh, she did that very well, but she wasn't getting promoted above that. And uh, it turned out it was because she had attention deficit disorder. As long as she was doing that work she had, she could do it because it was very exciting. There's so many things going on, so many people uh, coming in and, and arguing or pleading or whatever that uh, it was an exciting job, but the more boring things of sitting down and have, having to go over whatever, you know, uh, uh, things that had to be written up uh, slowly, that was very difficult for her. And, uh, and once we fi figured this out and she got on some Ritalin or Adderall or something, 
uh, she was able to go up in her job. And these are some things that are the psychiatrist might miss talking about in the first visit. And uh, also having a mild bipolar tendency is often missed. So I wouldn't even consider the first visit definitive. You know, a internist, if you've got a problem and you've got an abdominal pain, they don't examine you once and say, this is what it is. They say, let's do this exam, let's do that exam, let's think about this, and it's going to take a few weeks, and, and maybe in a month we can sit down and we'll have a definitive answer. And in psychiatry, sometimes it needs to be the same thing, that we should be patient, and the psychiatrist should be patient as well, and keep exploring different areas to find out where all the problems are. Uh, it helps also if the psychiatrist can meet with some family members and have the family members give input. Because a lot of times we have some uh, quirks or excessive depression or excessive highs that we don't notice, but everybody in our family notices. And that's very helpful to the psychiatrist. So this is Robert McMullen, and I've just talked a little bit about what you should expect in a visit with a psychiatrist. Thank you very much, Paul.